it's almost a shame that today's first reading was not yesterday's. Because with the gospel yesterday, Jesus speaks of great tribulations and turmoil, wars and insurrections, natural disasters, and persecutions. And to any Jewish person who heard Jesus speaking this, remember the not too distant past, the Antiochian persecution that led to the Maccabean revolt, would know that this was nothing new, even for the Jewish people. But that's what we hear in today's first reading. And we even hear perhaps a little bit of the propaganda that went along with King Antiochus' persecution. Let's unite our nation. Sounds very appealing. Let's unite everyone under one God, under one faith, and bear all other faiths so we will be a united people. It sounds very, very appealing. So, of course, anyone who does not do that would be against the united kingdom, would be against the one people that must be, deep down, rebels who are seeking to infiltrate and destroy the unity of this kingdom. And so, very naturally, the Jewish people were horrendously persecuted, and ultimately it led to the family of Maccabeus revolting and driving out the pagans, eventually purifying the temple, an event that we celebrate every year. Hanukkah, as the Jewish people do. But we see in the Jewish people something very important to what it means to be people of God, in their case, faithful to the covenant. And that is that they are countercultural. The prevailing culture and the dominant empire at the time wanted to unite the people, which would require the Jews to forsake their covenant obligations. And they went against the grain. The first reading, of course, does say that many did go along with the prevailing culture. But the admired remnant are those who were countercultural, even though it led to a very horrendous and bloody persecution. Today we celebrate the dedication of the Basilicas to St. Peter and Paul in Rome. It's interesting we don't celebrate either one of those separately, except, let's say, we celebrate the chair of Peter and the conversion of Paul. But we celebrate the dedication of the Basilicas together, we celebrate the two saints together on June 29th. But we see in them the example of all the apostles and the early church, the fact that the early church was counter-cultural. It was very, very different from the moral and cultural and social norms of the Greco-Roman society that dominated the Mediterranean region at the time Christianity originally flourished. Now, yes, of course, there were times when they were able to use the culture to segue into preaching the gospel, such as in the Acts of the Apostles, when St. Paul comes to Athens. What does he say? He sees all these shrines to these pagan gods, including one to an unknown god, and he doesn't say they're wrong. He simply says, I see how devout you all are, how religious you all are. All these shrines to these divine gods including the shrine to an unknown God. I'm going to tell you now about that unknown God. So there were times when Paul didn't have to be countercultural. He used the culture to sneak in the teaching of the gospel. And of course, before the church was ever a Latin church, the prevailing and traditional language of Catholicism in the early church was in fact Greek. So even though the predominant culture was Greek, it did become a very Christian Greek culture. However, there were times when Paul did need to be counter-cultural. And if you've ever read the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, he's writing to a great economic center in Corinth, in the heart of Greco-Roman society, and he's pulling his hair out, but little hair there was, they say he was bald. <laughs> and what is he saying to them in this hedonistic culture? And he's speaking to Christians who still live this Greco-Roman morality. He says, the body is not for immorality, it is for the Lord. The body is not to be meant for prostitutes and depravity. The body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and we must glorify God in our body. Something very countercultural to the ancient Greek understanding of human physicality and humanistic morality. And ultimately, according to our tradition, all but one of the twelve apostles died a martyr's death because their countercultural stance antagonized the Greco Roman society in which they found themselves, and they were arrested, persecuted, and executed. 
Peter on the cross that was converted, and Paul through beheading because he was a Roman citizen. He got lucky, he didn't have to suffer on a cross. They just killed him by cutting his head off. We are called in the same way to be countercultural. And every now and again we hear very, very appealing cliches that have unalignment <coughs> values that are contrary to the values we are called to live as followers of Christ. War on women. We certainly don't want to be a part of that. And of course, that is in itself is a counterpoint to our value with regard to human life. And we hear other such cliches that seek to pull people away from loyalty to their faith, to give in to the prevailing moral, social, political, cultural wind of the day. And we even see many within our own community of faith, just as we hear in today's first reading, who give in to that and become advocates not of the gospel, but of that secular, progressive, prevailing moral pressures that seek to pull people away from it. And we see in other parts of the world where it's not just a cultural war, but very much a persecution for people who profess a faith in Jesus Christ. And those perhaps could be the storms that we hear about in today's gospel that toss the church back and forth, the apostles remaining within the bark of that church, in the bark of that boat. But Jesus is never far off, calling us to get a hold of ourselves, to have faith that he is present. And so let us today as we celebrate these two principal apostles, Peter and Paul, the dedication of the basilicas in Rome, some of us may have had the fortune of visiting those of the like St. Peter's and St. Paul outside the walls. Let us remember the example given to us by the apostles in the early church who were not interested in being culturally amenable to the people to whom they were preaching, but that they be true to the gospel that Jesus called them to live, to preach, to emulate, and evangelize so that others would become a part of that faith community. In the same way, let us be countercultural today. We may not be in line with the majority opinion, so what? The vast majority may resent or reject or not agree with the values we hold to, hold to, so what? The majority of Catholics may not even agree with the certain teachings of our church, especially with regard to morality, so what? We're called to be true to that gospel Jesus gave us, and let us an imitation of the Jews in today's first reading, and an imitation of the apostles led by Peter and Paul, that we will be true to that gospel we have been given. And pray for those who do so at the cost 